tidal theory. Tides go up, tides go down, tides move side to side. In this talk, I want to talk about tides going up and tides going down and how we can work out the height of a tide of the place we're going to for any time during the day. 75% of the Earth is covered in water and that water is pulled out by the sun and more so the moon and when they're in line it pulls a bigger bulge of the water on the side that the sun and moon are and on the opposite side. So when the moon's in line with the sun or opposite to the sun we'll get a big tide and that's called a spring tide. So on a spring tide we'll get a high high water and a low low water and the difference between them, the difference between low water and high water, which is called the range, will be the biggest. So a greater range of tide. When they're opposite to each other, the bulge will be less. And this is called a neap tide. And on this, we'll get a low high water and a high low water, and it'll be a smaller range of tide. So on a neap tide, because it's a smaller range, there'll be less flow. On a spring tide, because it's a greater range, there'll be more flow. So that's quite simplistic. If we take the Earth, we can see there's land in the way, and it really depends on the geography of the land and the seabed as to how much tidal range we'll have. So if we take the biggest range of the world, which is the Bay of Fundy, Fundy which has a range of 13 metres, and the second biggest in the world is in the UK, which is in the Bristol Channel, which has a range of 12 metres. Within a country, they can vary enormously. So Collier Bay in northwest coast of Australia, 10 metres range, and the southeast coast, 1 to 3 metres range. Also, the effects of tides, we can have wind, wind below the surface of the water, and push the level of the water up. So the level of the water could be deeper than we predicted with our tide, and if it's blowing off the land, we'll get a lower water. So when we look up the tidal times, we work out the tidal times, that's called a predicted height. What's actually happening with the atmospheric conditions is the actual height. And quite often, there's a difference between the predicted height and the actual height of the tide. Also, air pressure. So if the air is pushing down, it will stop the tide coming up. If the air is sucking up in deep low pressure, which you'd expect around a hurricane or a deep low pressure, it will actually bulge the surface and you'll get a higher high tide. So terms, chart datum, we've spoken about chart datum. Chart datum is a very low level of tide and it's represented on the chart as where the C meets the green piece on the chart. The green on the chart is, as you remember, sometimes land, sometimes water. So it's put at a very low level. It will go below, the tide level will go below chart datum and we're going to do another video to explain that. Charted depth. So any depth between chart datum and the seabed is known as the charted depth. So there'll be your numbers on the chart. So if it said six on the chart, it'll be six meters depth from this chart datum to the bottom. Height of tide. That'll be the height from chart datum to the water. So the depth, if you're sailing here, will be the depth of the height of tide plus the depth on your chart from chart datum to the seabed. Mean high water neaps will be the high water on top of the neap tide. Mean low water neaps will be the low water on the neap tide here. And the range will be between them. As you see, the range is small on neap tides. Mean high water springs will be the high water on the spring tides and mean low water springs will be the low water on the spring tides. And the range will be the difference between them. And this range is bigger for springs than it is for neaps, as we said before. Highest astronomical tide. Well, that's the highest the tide will ever go. And sometimes shown as HAT, highest astronomical tide. Clearances under bridges. So we have a bridge on the chart. The clearances are written as the clearances from highest astronomical tide to the top of the bridge. So at all times, it will either be the height given or more. 
so it is a safety factor so when you say that's two, 10 meters sorry that's 10 meters high on the bridge on the chart you either have 10 meters or more on the chart so heights of bridges are given from highest astronomical tide depths of the water are taken from chart datum and they're safety factors so chart datum is about as low as it will go highest astronomical tide is as high as it will go heights of lighthouses are given above mean high water springs so they're the tidal terms so you can now have a look go backwards or forwards on this video and answer the questions in your book to find out the time of high water and low water during the day we need to look them up in the uh, tide tables so these are produced by the Admiralty and therefore different parts of the world also they're in the almanac and the ones we use will be in our training almanac and they'll be for each standard port a standard port is a port that publishes tide tables for each day of the year or you can get a local tide table there's a Cornish one Southampton one and also the Port of London issues um, tide tables for the year and here's your training almanac with the tide tables and the pages uh, with the months on there and it gives you the tide heights and times for each day of the year. So if we look closely, we'll see the top left, it says time zone UT. And if it's a summer time, we add an hour for the non-shaded areas. So here we are. If we look at the uh, tide tables here for Victoria on the 22nd, the Friday, the high water is at 11.21 and the height of the high water is 5.4 metres and that's above chart datum. The second height water is at 23.40 and the height is 5.3 metres above chart datum. If you look at the 24th of the low water, at 6.20 it's 1.4 metres above chart datum and at 18.52 it's 1.5 metres above chart datum. Most of the days will show four tides as, is, as it shows there on the 24th. Some, due to the, uh, the calendar we have fitting into the lunar calendar, will only have three tides, and that's just how it fits into the tide table. So don't worry if the day that you pick only has three tides. The tidal range. The range of a tide is the difference in height between high water and low water. So on the 22nd here, we've got a high water 5.4, low water 1.1, and the range of 4.3 go further on we've got a on the 24th we have a low water 1.3 high water 5.3 and a range of four meters to the 22nd high water 5.3 low water 1.3 so 5.3 minus the 1.3 gives us a tidal range of four meters and we wanted to get in the habit when we look up the tides to work out the tidal ranges so spring and neap types on your page you'll see that the spring tides will be in red and the neap tides will be in blue. Let me explain. So when we look at the reds, it will give you the mean or average range of a spring is 4.9. The mean or average range of a neap is 2.4. And we can look at the ranges on our tidal curve and the mean or average range for a spring is 4.9 metres and the mean or average range for a neap is two meters. And that is for the port that this tidal curve is for. So the mean or average range is taken from all the tides. So we'll see mean high water springs here, there's some that are above it and some that are below it. Mean high water neaps here, some that are above it and some that are below it. So when we go back and have a, have a look at this, it will be the average, so some will be bigger some springs will be bigger and some neaps will be smaller. This is quite important uh, when we look in detail later on with the tides. So if we look at the pages, not all um, neap tides are in the blue. So if we look two days after, we'll see that the low water is higher and the high water there is the same. So usually it's around the blue and a little bit after we'll have the neaps. And we'll look further on, it's the same with the springs. So although it's red here, about two days later, um, we have a higher range. Time zones, universal time. 
If we're in daylight saving time, summer time, add one hour. This may seem a bit of a problem now, but when we go on to Yacht Master and we do secondary ports, um, the reason for this becomes clear. Depth of water, just to recap here. The height of tide is the amount of water measured above chart datum. So here we have chart datum, and the amount of water above chart datum will be the height of tide, and that's what we work out from the book. The charted depth on your chart will be the depth from chart datum to the seabed. If it's above chart datum, and it's within a drying area, so it's green on your chart, it will have a line underneath, and at chart datum it will stick up as much as it says on the chart in green with a line underneath. So the depth of the water, where you are with the echo sounder, will be the charted depth plus the amount of tide above chart datum that we've worked out. So if we look at the chart, here will be charted depth, so that'll be 27 meters. Here will be 19.8 meters. Here will be 3.6 meters. And here will be 2.9 meters. And this talks about it again, 1.2 metres above chart datum, drying height in the green with a line underneath. So if we had 1.2 metres of tide here, it would just be covering 2.2 metres of tide here, then there will be a metre of water at that time. This is a bridge height and it will show here 4.5 metres and that's 4.5 metres above highest astronomical tide. So at highest astronomical tide, there'll be 4.5 metres clearance under this bridge. At the rest of the time, there'll be more than 4.5 metres clearance. And the lighthouses, so if we look at the lighthouse here, it's flashing for every 15 seconds, 25 little m is the height above mean high order springs. Then incidentally, the 5 m is a nominal range, so it's the range of the light is five nautical miles. If we look at our um, training almanac, page 12, it will give us information of the port. So if we take Port Victoria, the highest astronomical tide or height for Port Victoria, 6.3. Mean high water springs, 5.6. Mean high water neaps, 4.4. Mean low water neaps, 2. Mean low water springs, 0.7. So as you see, for all these harbours in our training almanac, the highest astronomical tide, the mean high water springs, the mean high water neaps, the mean low water neaps, and the mean low water springs will all be individual to that harbour. So later on, if you get asked a bridge clearance questions and you want to know what the highest astronomical tide is, page 12, training almanac, it's in that table. So we need to work out the height of a tide for not high water or low water um, for a time that's in between. So we will need to use a tidal curve, and for that, we'll need to find out the height of tide on that particular day. So here's a tidal curve, and it shows you here, low water, tide coming in, high water, tide going out. These will be individual for each port. So here we are, here we are two close together. We've got La Havre and Dieppe, and you can see the curves are different from each port. And that's because they're influenced by geographical features. So don't take a curve to fit all. Take the curve for the port you're in or the nearest port you're in to work out your tidal heights. So on your tidal curve, on the top left, it will say mean ranges for that harbour. On this one, springs 5.2, neeps 3.2. So the springs refer to the red line. So if we're on a spring tide, we refer to the red line. If we're on a neat tide, we refer to the blue dotted line here. If we're halfway between springs and neaps, we'd refer halfway between these two. This will become apparent in a minute. The high water, the high water that we, uh, the nearest one that we need for that day, we pop in this box here. Say if high water was 12 o'clock, we'd pop it in this box where it says plus one hour. It will be 1300, 1400, 1500, 1600, 1700, 1800. And if we were to go backwards, it will be 12 o'clock high water, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. Each hour here is divided up into six. One, two, three, four, five, six. This is ease of measuring time divided up into six. Each one of these increments will be 
10 minutes. This was the last diagram, just flipped it on its side to look like this. So we've got the curve here, we've put the times in, and here we'll actually tell you high water heights in meters. So we'll put the high water height in meters in here that we've worked out, and the low water height in meters here that we've worked out. The zero at the end will be chart datum. Bear with me, it will become apparent. It's probably easier to show you an example. So here's an example. How to find the height of a tide at a time on a particular day. You need to know the time of high water, high to high water, the high to low water, is it a spring or is it a neap? So the question is, what is the height of tide at Hamilton on Thursday the 25th of June at 0930? So we need to go to the training almanac for the 25th of June. And here it is, 25th of June, up here. And 0930 is the time we're looking for. So it's a rising tide. So 0635 is 0 0.6, 1244, 5.6. So the two tides we need will be these two. Because it's a non-shaded area and it's June in the summer, we'd have to add an hour. So the time of high water, 12.44, brought down here, 12.44, add the hour, 13.44. And the height of high water, 5.6, and the height of the low water, 0 0.6. We take this 0 0.6 because it straddles between these two tides, the time we need for the 9.30. We work out the range of the tide. The range of the tide is the difference between high water and low water. So 5.6 minus 0 0.6 is 5 metres. So the range of the tide is 5 metres, which is a spring tide. Here we go. 5 metres range. Springs on your curve 5.2. So we'd be working off the red line because it's a spring tide. Go back to the high water. High water 13.44. Go to our tidal curve. 13.44. We're looking for 9.30, so we put minus one hour, 12.44, minus two hours, 11.44, minus three hours, 10.44, minus four hours, 9.44. Put the next one in, it will be 8.44. So our time is going to be somewhere here. So if that's 9.44, 10 minutes before be 9.34, and halfway between here will be where our time is. We want to put in the heights, so it says here, high water heights in metres, mark off 5.6, 5.6 here, low water 0 0.6, 0 0.6, draw a line between them. And as I said before, looking at the bottom corner, 9.44, this will be 9.34, and move along here, and we'll find 9.30. Mark 9.30 on here, draw a line vertically up. So here we go, 9.30, line vertically up. Because it's a spring tide, we're taking it to the red line. Mark off the red line, and we mark across here horizontally till it comes to our tidal line. There we go, marked it off. Common errors here is that we don't draw these lines parallel to the lines. They go untechnically wibbly wobbly same here so if we don't get these right we're not going to get the right answer at the end for the rwa they're looking for an answer with a tolerance of 0.1 of a meter so we need to get into the good habit of doing these properly and then we take it from this line up to the top which gives us the answer so the height will be 1.5678 1.8 meters above chart datum so the height of tide at 9.30 is 1.8 metres above chart datum. So we know when we look at the charts, all the depths on the chart, we can add 1.8 metres. If it's a drying height, we can factor in, depending on the height of the drying height, because um, that will stick up above chart datum. So we'll take that from the 1.8, which gives us a height in the drying height area.